Hello and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jack Wood and I enjoy making videos about building, fishing, and travel. If you are a loyal subscriber and have been with me since day one, you may remember a video I did about an abstract living wall. That is a planner box type idea that I made and I wanna revisit that idea. So today's video, we're gonna be building a planner box. So this is the planner box that we're gonna be building today. This guy is almost two years old, so he has been damaged by the weather. But if you do build one and you don't want it to look like this, I suggest adding a clear coat or some type of varnish to protect the wood. If you're the type of person that doesn't really enjoy building things, you can go check out my website down in the description below. I have a bunch of cool wooden products for sale and some paintings and stringer as well. With that, let's jump into the video. You need two 1x6x8s, by eight 1x4x8s, by a saw, a drill, nails and a hammer, 3 inch screws, sandpaper, a pencil, a tape measure, and a speed square. I forgot to mention, but if you are building this project, you do need two more 1x4x8s. By That's optional, but they will be used for backing to hold everything together. For your first measurement, measure one 1x4 one to a length of 3 feet. So now that you have your section marked out, it's time to cut it out. So to make the process a little bit quicker, what I like to do is lay this piece of wood on top of the piece of wood that I'm cutting, make the two ends flush at the back, then push it up so the saw blade is hitting the other end of this piece of wood. Then I just make the cut. And it's pretty easy and simple, and I don't have to do any other marking. I'm just gonna cut out 16 more of these. To create the backboard, you need 16 three-foot sections of one by four. All right, so once you have all your sections cut out, it's time to start the assembly process. I would also like to mention that now is the time to cut out your back support strips. Mine, I simply just used uh, some scrap wood that I found, and the length of these are 57 inches. If you're going to assemble the planter box the same way as me, I suggest cutting these strips out to the same length. Another thing I want to mention is that thickness of the support strips on the back does not matter. These are 3 fourths of an inch thick, but the support strips on this project are much thicker. These are 2 by 2s but the thickness does not matter at all. It's up to you to choose the thickness. So what I've done is I just laid out all the strips in the order that I like them. Now I can start the assembly process. For the materials, what you need are, of course, all your strips and the backing support. And you also need uh, your hammer, some nails, some popsicle sticks, and a speed square. So uh, let's start. All right, to start off, grab your first section that you want to nail down and move it back so there's half an inch to an inch gap right underneath your first section. Grab your speed square. Make sure everything is straight and flush. Grab your nails and hammer and hammer in the first section. So once you got the first side done, you wanna do the exact opposite on the other side. All right, once you got this section in, you can start doing the second one. Now it's the time to grab your two popsicle sticks. So this step is optional, but I like to look with small little spaces in between each section. So to make those spaces, Take your two popsicle sticks and place them right on top of your support. Now, just grab your next section of wood, slide it on. Make sure it is flush with the sides of the bottom section. As you can see, there is a gap in between the two sections, which I think looks really nice. I'm just gonna hammer this in and do the same to all the other sections until they're attached. Now that the backboard is finished, it's time to actually build the boxes that will hold the plants, flowers, anything that you're going to put into it. Now we're going to take some measurements on both of our 1x6s. Alright, so I'm going to be making three boxes to hold my plant, flowers, or whatever I'm going to put in them. But I'm just going to show you guys how to make one, and you can make as many as you want. So, for the measurements, 
You want the length to be two feet. You want the width to be four and a half inches and you want two of those. Then for the bottom pan that will hold everything, you want that to be 22 and a half inches. Just to go over the pieces that we traced out, this will be the front face of the box. These will be the sides and this will be the bottom of the box. Now it's time to cut these out using our saw. So there are multiple ways to assemble the box. You can do a butt joint, which is this type of joint right here. You just butt up the two pieces of wood and hammer in some nails or screw in some screws. Personally, I don't think this is strong enough, even though this piece was able to stay together for over a year. For this project, I'm going to add a 45 degree angle, such as right here, and then add in nails, one going in that way and one going in the other way. I feel like this makes a tighter joint. That is what I'm gonna do for the boxes I'm making today. To help make these cuts, I threw together this simple jig to help me hold the pieces of wood in place. So, now to attach these ends to the main face, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of tape and apply the tape to the edges right here to act as a hinge. I'm able to add wood glue right in between the scap so we could get a nice seal. So unfortunately, I don't have any more wood glue, but I do have some epoxy, so I did mix up a quick batch, and I'm gonna use that on this project. Once the glue is dried, now you can flip it over and tack in some nails to hold it together. So it is the second day and it's time to finish up the project. Now what I'm going to do is just take some sandpaper and sand over the edges to make them smooth. Now that those edges are sanded over, it's time to add the bottom plate. Now as you notice, uh, it is going to be a bit wider than expected, so what you have to do is just slightly trim that off. Well, a very simple way to solve this problem is to just take a pencil, make a mark right at the edge of the planter box on the bottom board, do that for both sides, and then take a straight edge and create a straight line and cut off that extra piece. So now all you have to do is just cut this piece out and attach it to your box. Now that you have your bottom strip cut out, before you attach it to the box, it is time to drill three drainage holes. Alright, so once those holes are drilled, you can now simply just attach it to the box using some nails. Okay, so I know it's not perfect and there's a little gap right here and right here on the edges. That's because these are not a perfect 45 degree angle, but I'm just going to leave it as is. These will act as extra drainage areas. Now it's time to put this on the backboard, which is over there. Don't mind the shopping cart, that is for a future video. All right, so as I stated before, you can make as many boxes as you would like. I'm gonna be needing three, so. So I got my three, now I'm just gonna go grab my board and start attaching these to it. After that, we're done. For this part, I highly suggest getting three inch wood screws. So a little trick that I've learned that helps install the boxes onto the backboard is you want to add a little bit of wood glue to the back of the boxes and then add a heavy object onto them. You want to allow that glue to dry so then you'll be able to flip over the board and add the screws. This helps a lot and I highly recommend doing it. Alright, so now that the glue has dried on those boxes, you can now carefully flip over the piece and install screws to thoroughly attach the boxes to the backboard. So the last step is pretty hard to do. You have to add screws to the back and into the planter boxes and it can be pretty hard on where to put the screws, but you should be able to see part of the box in between these lines, which should help 
But other than that, it's kind of just a trial and error method. You just gotta guess where the planter boxes are. But it's best to look underneath to see where the boxes are and then go ahead and just try your best to add the screws. I also highly suggest that you drill pilot holes before you drill in the screws to prevent the wood from splitting. Now that all the pilot holes have been drilled, I'm gonna add these three inch screws. Unlike the planter box over there, I will not be adding plants to this planter box because someone has ordered it off of my website. Again, link in description down below if you guys wanna check it out. But yeah, I think it turned out pretty good and it didn't take that long either. I built this in about a day, like a full day pretty much. But yeah, I think anyone can build it. So if you guys wanna know, the materials for this project cost about $40, which isn't too bad and I think this piece looks great anywhere. I'd also like to mention that if you wanna hang this somewhere, you have the option to screw in screws into the support strips and hang some hefty duty wire across the back like a picture frame and hang it on a wall or somewhere. Or you can. We could get these 90 degree big metal things. I don't really know what they're called, but they look like a giant L. And that's what we used to hang this on a wall. So you have many options on how to hang it, but it's really up to you. So if you guys made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for my next video because it's the biggest project I've ever built. So with that, thank you for watching. If you are a dedicated subscriber and waited all the way until the end, here's what the back of this project looks like. A little hint, it's uh, 15 feet long. So you'll see in the next video what this is.